Hey, Robert, this is Sandra LeFlong with EXP Realty, CSC Key, Florida, Robert Menner, EXP Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey, Robert, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. And you have a market report to talk about because the average rent in Cincinnati is about $1,300 or $1,400 a month. And you honing in on that value point, not just for renters, but an opportunity for investors to buy properties, take advantage of a return on their, on their investment, and a buy and hold because of the added value in certain neighborhoods. What are your top three or four neighborhoods that you've determined are something to really watch right now? Uh, I would, my home, um, Township of Mason and Montgomery and Madeira and Indian Hill, to name the four. There's actually an investment property in Indian Hill. That's rare. How did you find something there? Uh, just off the uh, Cincy MLS, came across it, and I know it's only going to last probably maybe a day or two, and uh, my father-in-law and I checked it out today, and it's uh, actually in Indian Hill, and it's listed at 259, three bed, one and a half bath, and a little over 1,500 square feet, and you're in the number one school district in Cincinnati, Ohio. For Indian Hill, normally you have to spend about a million dollars to be in that neighborhood. How is it that there even exists a piece of property at that value point? Uh, no idea, but it's a rare opportunity, and it's, it's actually in Sycamore Township, but it qualifies and is uh, assigned to Indian Hill School District. Wow, what a home run. So that's uh, another uh, gem that you would find for an investor. And of course, any investor that we're working with, we're gonna treat him like we're related to him. Like, and it just so happens that your father-in-law was first in line, but any investors out there who wanna snag something that gives them value in the Cincinnati area, it is just a, an amazing, there's not enough inventory right now, is there? No. It, there is a scarce inventory, and when stuff is coming on the market, it is not lasting very long, especially in these top four neighborhoods. So come back to those other three neighborhoods and tell me. Now, I know them like the back of my hand because I've been in, I started out in Cincinnati in real estate, love the area. It seems like half of CSC Key is populated with people from Cincinnati. So it's old home day for me or home day. Tell me about these three neighborhoods that I love and that people are going to want to pay attention and ask you about. Um, Mason in particular, you are going to want to pay attention to just for the simple fact that there's 20% of the population is uh, renters and the average rent is $1,200 a month. Uh, along with the P&G and uh, Mitsubishi and Johnson & Johnson uh, for flagship employment, along with Mason School being very well. Um, and then you have Oakley and High Park, who is more demographically towards the uh, millennials. So there uh, you have a 50% or higher renters um, in those areas. So all of these areas are hot areas right now. For That's rent. exciting. Now, my personal favorite about Hyde Park is you can get on your bike and go to Lunkin Airport, ride your bike and come back, hit some hills, have the most fabulous choices of coffee shops, cafes, diners, parks. It just has an amazing lifestyle there, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you are in a centralized location, whether you got to go to Kentucky or if you got to go up north to Dayton, it is very centralized. Now, the nice thing about what you mentioned, flagship employers. So in the Sarasota, Siesta Key, Bradenton area, when I start naming employers, they're not necessarily in someone's stock portfolio, but everyone knows about Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and these flagship employers. Everywhere from the person who has a PhD, who's inventing and honing products to the people in the whole area that are making sure that product gets out to the consumer or listening to the consumer. They have everything there, don't they? Oh, absolutely. You nailed it. 
Yeah. So that enables these neighborhoods to have a lot of diversity. Someone can rent there in the four neighborhoods you're talking about. It's not all renters. It's not all single family homeowners. It's the, the nice mix that gives value and diversity. And of course, access, getting to those jobs is a big deal. So the other couple of properties that you showed your father today, you kind of cherry picked the best ones. What were they? Uh, the last, this very last one was actually in Montgomery and that's a Sycamore School District, which is a, a top tier district as well. And what we're noticing in that area in particular is people are buying because there's no more land. Um, so people are actually buying houses just to knock them down. So we found a, an old gym, very outdated, but going for 287. Uh, when builders are actually buying up lots and for 350,000. Uh, so this one being for 287,000, a nice good buy and hold and wouldn't be surprised if a builder comes knocking on your door uh, in the near future to pay a lot more than what you got it for. There are a couple of builders in that neighborhood who are literally knocking on doors, aren't they? Absolutely. <laughs> so if someone's working with you, then they can get in front of that guy or gal who's knocking on doors because you know how to pull those numbers out and make them relative to that either value point or investment point. You know, if somebody were just buying a home for the first time, all of these options work for them too, does, don't, doesn't it? Does, what's the correct way? All of these options work, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. First time home buyers, I mean, you can't go wrong um, buying a very low price in, the, in these neighborhoods because it's going to do nothing but appreciate. You're not going to lose anything, whether you're an investor or a first time home buyer. So the nice thing about interest rates, have we ever seen 2.75 before? Oh, no, no. <laughs> do we think we're going to see it again real soon? Yeah, this is, it, it, it's uh a dream come true, I can say, for, for first home, home home buyers. So for a first time home buyer, if you're in that price point, it might sound like a real stretch at 250, 300, but that, um, that mortgage payment, depending on how much you can save, you take your first and last month's rent that you're gonna get back because you've been a fabulous tenant and you're gonna make sure the place is clean and has no holes when you move out. And you're gonna take the first and last month's rent and you're also going to save what the, another piece of rent would be for down payment. And that actually now puts you in that first, first home with FHA. Or even um, if you're out in the county, a USDA loan, which is 100% loan guaranteed. Now, Robert knows how to help you with that. So back to being a first-time home buyer, don't be afraid. Get on the phone with Robert, click or text him because now you just look at what your rent payment in Cincinnati, the average is what you said, $1,300, right? Yep. And you take that $1,300 and add a couple of hundred dollars to it, and now you own a home, and these neighborhoods are gonna appreciate, the average is 4%, but Robert, what do you think these neighborhoods are gonna do over the next five and 10 years? Um, I, I think they have the capacity to, to double that with the way they're going right now. And that's because of the jobs, access to the city and the amenities. The school districts are top notch because all the employers in the area, it matters to them that who they recruit to be there, have, they have an opportunity for higher education, more access to um, additional degree programs and also for all of their families. And there's multi-generations that live in these four neighborhoods that you're talking about. We have grandma and grandpa, we have cousins, mom and dads, babies, and then more great grandchildren on the way. We have everything in these neighborhoods, don't we? Yep, we sure do. And so what did your dad narrow, you and your, you know, when your dad was out, what did he say about these prospects? Um, so we were focusing uh, a lot on the cash on cash return that he would get on his uh, investment. And so while some of these are priced somewhat high and he's not going to get the return he wants, we're going to continue to keep looking. But I can for sure say the ones in Mason uh, that we saw along with the one in Indian Hill 
are the numbers are looking very well is what I can tell you. So he's just starting out with this. There's a chance that he'll be in this for 30, 60, 90 days as he educates himself and someone else very well might snag this as you're preparing him to see what goes on or over the next 30, 60, 90 days and you look at inventory, do you think about one or three or five properties like this will pop up every month, every couple of months? What do you think the frequency will be? Um, I think it's hard to say. It might, might take a little bit of actually, you know, door knocking and asking people actually like cold door knocking or writing letters because some of these ones we're seeing uh, hit the market are, they are, spectacular is what I can say. I, when you run the numbers on them and you look at the neighborhood and schools, it's almost, it's almost like hitting a clearance rack at the store almost. Oh um, my. So that seller who wants the most amount of money for their property will want to get in, uh, in touch with Robert. So they understand the exact dynamics of the neighborhood and what the potential investor buyer is going to be looking at what the first time home buyer is going to be looking at and what uh, somebody who's moving into the area so that Robert can give you the full perspective of all the different type of buyers that are looking for a home like yours. What else would you wanna to say to a seller right now who's thinking about coming on the market in the next 30 or 60 days? How should they prepare themselves? Um, I would say the, the ball is in your court. It is definitely a seller's market right now. So it, it if you're ready to list, I would not um, hang tight. I would get in the game while you can, and you can take advantage of the interest rates uh, moving into your new home, your maybe your forever home, um, so we can help you find that. That's an excellent strategy. And thank you for your time today, Robert. I'm really excited for what's going on in that area. And Cincinnati is just really got a gem in working with you and you've been there for a long time. Were you born in Cincinnati? Yes. Yes, I was. So I've been here, native Cincinnatian. <laughs> and you have family everywhere. You know all the neighborhoods. By the way, which hospital were you born in? Uh, Good Sam. <laughs> and all the babies that come from Good Sam are awesome and smart. Well, thank you, Robert. And you. we'll talk to you next Saturday. All right. Bye. Have a great day. You too. Take care. About Cincinnati for next Saturday's show, you can ask them and type them online and me and Robert will be available to ask them and we'll also edit this video so you have an opportunity to see it a second or third time. There's a lot of information there. You have a great day. I appreciate you tuning in and we'll talk to you soon.